Social loafing. Social loafing describes the phenomena that occurs when individuals exert less effort when working as a group than when working independently. It was first identified in 1913 by French agricultural engineer Max Ringelmann, who recognized that a collective group's performance required less effort by individuals compared to the sum of their individual efforts. In his experiment, participants pulled on a rope attached to a strain gauge. Ringelmann noted that two individuals pulling the rope only exerted 93% of their individual efforts. A group of three individuals exerted 85%, and groups of eight exerted 49% of their combined individual effort. As more individuals pulled on the rope, each individual exerted themselves less. From these observations, Ringelmann determined that individuals perform below their potential when working in a group. Since Ringelmann's observations, social loafing has been identified in numerous studies and many causes have been traced to explain why social loafing occurs. From an individual perspective, social loafing most often occurs when individuals figure out that the specific contribution of each person is difficult to identify. A team approach often means that there is no qualifiable method of determining which members did what and to what degree and how well. It is under these circumstances that social loafing is most likely to occur. The less that an individual's contribution is likely to be noticed and graded, the more likely social loafing will happen. On the other hand, when team members feel or believe that others are not putting forth as much effort as themselves, these team members would lessen their efforts too. This causes a downward cycle that ends at the point where only the minimum amount of work is performed. It is then reasonable that social loafing tends to occur in societies where the focus is on the individual rather than the group. In a study comparing American managers to Chinese managers, researchers found that social loafing occurred with the American managers while there was no such occurrence with the Chinese managers. They explained this through a comparison between collectivist and individualist orientations. A collectivist orientation places group goals and collective action ahead of self-interest, which reinforces the participant's desire to pursue group goals in order to benefit the group. People from this orientation gain satisfaction and feelings of accomplishment from group outcomes and view their individual actions as an important contribution to the group's well-being. In contrast, an individualist motive is focused on self-interest. Contribution toward achieving collective goals is inconsistent with self-interested motives unless differential awards are made by the group. An individualist is more likely to loaf when he or she can maximize personal gain without putting forth as much effort as had he or she done, done the work individually. Social loafing engenders negative consequences that affect both the group as a whole as well as the individual. As explained in the Ringelman effect, the negative social cues involved with social loafing produce decreased group performance. And when a member of a group becomes a social loafer, not only will the member reduce any opportunity he might have had to grow in his ability and knowledge, other non-loafers might feel resentment and frustration from having to carry the weight of the work. Given this, what kind of steps can one take to guard against social loafing? It has been discovered that the smaller the team is, 
the less likely there will be a member who slacks off to the detriment of the overall goal. Another useful tool is to be more specific in the assignation of tasks. When more specialized tasks assigned to the members, it naturally creates a situation in which the group dynamic cannot reach its highest potential when one member slacks off. If that one member doesn't do the job, nobody else can and everyone suffers. Assigning tasks that speak to their unique interests and talents is also a terrific way to decrease the potential for social loafing. In fact, this has been found to be the single most effective method for avoiding social loafing. Of course, everyone enjoys a reward. So the final advice for avoiding the dangers of social loafing is to create a system for measuring individual performance and rewarding those who excelled above and beyond the team goal.